regular meeting of the Star City Council for December the 3rd, 2019 is called to order. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and please remain standing afterwards. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'd like to have a moment of silence for Police Chief Dave Kepke and his family regarding their loss. May he rest in peace. Roll call, please. McKeever. Here. Meyer. Here. Wireball. Here. Truka. Sack. Here. Moe. Here. Shock. Here. Before you, you have the minutes from the uh, <coughs> November the 19th, 2019 regular meeting. I need a motion to accept these minutes. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Wirebaugh, second by Mr. Myers to accept the minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passed, thank you. This is where we grant permission for visitors to speak. Our first speaker this evening, we have Stephanie Buchanan from the DeSaris Public Library. If you'd step up to the podium, please. We need your name and your address, if you would, please. I am Stephanie Buchanan, and my address is 200 East Mansfield Street, the Bucyrus Public Library. I am the new library director there. I'm just here to say hello to everyone and to thank you for your support of the library. Okay. Well, and, and we are going to be coming up. We've got an item here from the library about appointments tonight, and uh, uh, Stephanie was uh, nice enough to come. Uh, could you give us just a little bit of your background, uh, or where you've been, and what you're looking to do at the library? Okay, I have been in libraries for over 25 years. I was at Huron County Community Library and Bellevue, Bellevue Public Library. Excuse me. And I came here because I love this community. I keep saying this, I feel like I'm on repeat, but this is a hometown feeling to me as soon as I came into the town. So I was very excited to get the position. Um, we're really looking at what, what needs fixed at the library and who we can partner with, and then looking for new and innovative ways that we can serve the community. So just looking forward and doing some planning right now. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for coming up and saying hi to everybody this evening. Thank you. Anyone else would like to address council this evening? If so, please step to the podium. We need your name and address. My name is Jenny Vermillion, 515 Hill Street, Bucyrus, Ohio. I emailed a letter to all the council members, which I will officially read in two minutes. Dear council member, I would like to have my opinion known regarding the safety service director's residency expansion requested by the mayor's office, but first I'd like to digress. In my eight years of being your county commissioner and being in meetings with economic development and industry leaders, community foundation, the concerns have always been the same. How do we keep qualified people in our town? How do we draw people to work in our city? How, to, how do we bring back our children who've gone off to college? <clears throat> Excuse me, okay. Issues. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is to answer these questions that the Community Foundation started the Come Home Scholarship to draw our college educated children back to our community. It is to answer these questions that the Crawford Partnership in Education and Economic Development collects annually graduating seniors' email addresses to keep in touch regarding available jobs in Crawford County in an effort to draw them back. It is my very strong belief that if we expand the radius of residency restriction, then we are negating the efforts of these and other organizations to draw people back into our community. The purpose of residency restriction is to not only ensure that the individual is vested in our community, but to also garner their tax dollars. If we expand even to 20 miles as suggested, this individual will have their property and sales taxes go to another community. There are qualified individuals who reside within our city limits as shown by the past election. 
and even individuals who are willing to return home for the position of safety service director. It is my fervent wish that this expansion of residency requirement be voted down. The position of safety service director is an unelected position, but in the past decades has, been, has become the most powerful position in our town. This position is responsible for the day-to-day -day running of our city, oversees personnel issues, secures grants for our town, and works on city budget, etc. It should be held by someone who is completely vested in our community, from buying a house in our community, to eating in our restaurants, to shopping in our stores, to living in our community. Please vote no on the residency requirement expansion for the safety service director. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Anybody else? I, I was just, I, I, are, you, are, you, are you aware that we don't right now have a residency requirement? For we have three miles. It's what well, you, you argue about living in Cyrus. We don't have that right now, right? We have three miles. Okay, we don't have like, what you're arguing for. You want to reduce it from three miles to the city limits? Is that what you're proposing? No. Okay, so I'm not sure. What, what was in the paper? Okay. <clears throat> What's coming before council is regarding the expansion of 20 miles the three miles is fine because the city limits people live outside the city just outside the city limits and still consider themselves citizens of the use it's not a problem with the three miles it's the 20 miles when we reach into other communities other counties if you go into ohio means jobs and do a search for 20 miles for jobs you're in here in county you're in morrow county you're in richland county you're in marion county you're in wyandotte county i just didn't know if you knew we didn't have one right now we have three miles. Okay, I just, your argument was not that stated that way. Can I just, I'm just asking a question. No. Thank you. Anyone else address council? Okay, thank you. Moving, moving on, communications and petitions. Uh, we have uh, two communications. Uh, the first is from the, um, the Cyprus Public Library. It's dated, to, uh, dated November 20, addressed to uh, the city council and the council president. Uh, dear City Council members, the Desires Public Library Board of Trustees has three board members whose terms will expire on December 31, 2019. Two of these members, Don, Donna Moore and Hannah Jacobs, would like to be reappointed to the board for a term of three years. We are submitting three applicants for the opening that will need to be filled for the term of January 1, 2020 through December 31, 2022. The Besiris Public Library Board of Trustees would like the Besiris City Council to approve Donna Moore and Hannah Jacobs and to appoint one of the following persons. Lisa Miller, Deputy Clerk of Crawford County Probate Court, 800 Roger Street, Besiris. Tricia Rayner, Charge Master and Credit Analyst for Avita, 1120 Marion Road, Besiris. Kathleen M. Fisk, Instructor for Pioneer Career and Technology Center, 716 Roger Street, Besiris. Uh, thank you, Stephanie D. Buchanan, Director, the Cyrus Public Library, and this needs to be referred to the Public Development Board. Okay, I need a motion to put this into economic development. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. McKeever, second by Mr. Myers. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passed. Thank you. We have a letter here from the Ohio Division of Liquor Control. This is a new liquor license uh, being requested for Baker's BBQ of the Cyrus LLC. 1325 East Mansfield Street in Cyrus. This is a D5 permit. Uh, you will notice uh, in the attachments here on the second page of the listing of various kinds of uh, permits, what the D5 permit uh, entails, and this has to be referred to the Health and Safety Committee. Okay, I need a motion to direct this to the Health and Safety Committee. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Cohn, second by Mr. McKeever. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no in health and safety then. <coughs> Standing committee reports. Uh, <coughs> who gets us started here? Mr. Myers, would you please get us started? Absolutely. The Bissar City Council Drone Gregor Committee meeting was held Thursday, November 21, 2019, 6 p.m. to 7.03 p.m. Members present were Mark McKeever, Kevin Myers, Dan Wireball, Bruce Truca, Monica Sack, Doug Fogan, and Andrew Schock. Item number one. The meeting was called to order by Myers at 6 o'clock p.m. Item number two, public participation, there was none. Item three will be the order of committee business, starting with the Health and Safety Committee, which met at 6 p.m. to 6.33 p.m. Members present, Mark McKeever, Bruce Troop, Andrew Schock, and myself, Chair. Item one, liquor license renewals. Council received a letter from the Ohio Division of Liquor Control noting that all permits to sell alcoholic beverages in the city will expire on February 1, 2020 it must be renewed by the permit holders. 
The letter notified that if council wishes to object to a renewal, it must pass a resolution. The police chief has not objected to any existing liquor licenses in the city. Law Director Rob Ratliff added that he has issues with two businesses in the city selling instruments of drug abuse and drug paraphernalia, but that those objections don't fall under the categories relevant here. McKeever made a motion to not request a hearing on any of the renewals with a second by Truca. Motion passed by voice vote. The matter will go before the next full council. No legislation is required. Would you like to hold that vote now or at the end of this? We'll go at the end of the report. All right. Item two, AEP charging station. The Crawford County Partnership has been awarded a $94,000 grant through AEP for the installation of an electric vehicle charging station in the city. The partnership has requested legislation allowing AEP to send the funds to Cyrus, which would then reimburse the partnership. A parking space would also have to be dedicated for the station, and it was determined by AEP and the partnership that a space in city parking lot number six by Picking Park in Washington Square would be most feasible because of its visibility and a utility pole already installed at the location. The deadline for the grant funds allocation is December 27th. Myers noted that he spoke with area business owners and that they were in favor of the proposal. Ratliff added that the designation of a dedicated parking space for the station would go to the Traffic Commission for consideration before coming to Council. Shock made a motion to request the legislation sought by the partnership with a second by Truca. Motion passed by voice vote. Item three, codified ordinances 703 and 711, home solicitation sales, peddlers and solicitors law. Ratliff noted that violation of city solicitation laws is classified as a minor misdemeanor with a penalty of up to $500, but that it could be changed. The city does not require that a copy of the solicitor sales agreement be provided. Ratliff suggested that enforcement of the law with fingerprinting and background checks could be a burden for the police department. The item was continued. It was suggested that representatives from the police department and Crawford County Council on Aging be included in a future meeting on the topic. Item four, codified ordinance 303.08, impounding of vehicles. <coughs> Ratliff has noted that the city's codified ordinance on vehicle impoundment makes no mention of an impound fee and has suggested adding a sentence to codified ordinance 303.08, paragraph B, that the fee is $20 per day. A draft of the ordinance making that change was distributed. McKeever made a motion to request legislation making the change with a second Matruka. Motion passed by voice vote. Item five, codified ordinance 511 noise control. The committee is considering adding decibel levels, levels to chapter 511 noise control of the city's codified ordinances. Base readings with a decibel meter are being taken at various spots within the city. It was suggested that additional, additional readings will be helpful. The item was continued. Item six, Myers recess to the Health and Safety Committee meeting at 6.33 p.m. Okay, any questions or comments regarding the minutes of the Health and Safety Committee meeting? Okay, then we come back around to the uh, uh, liquor license renewals. This is an annual thing that uh, uh, the city has to uh, address. So uh, the, we're looking for a motion to not request a hearing <coughs> of any of the renewals. Do I have that motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. McKeever. Second. Second by Mr. Fote. Uh, let's do a, a roll call vote, if you would, please. Uh, um, McKeever. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Wireball. Yes. Truca. Sack. Yes. Fote. Yes. Shop. Yes. Okay, motion passed. Thank you very much. We'll get that information to the State Worker Department. Moving on to planning committee, Mr. McKeever. Yes, planning committee met Thursday, November 21st, 2018, from 6.33 p.m. to 6.41 p.m. Members present, Monica Sack, Bruce Truca, Kevin Myers, and myself, Chair. Number one, rezoning request for 1815 and 1825 East Mansfield Street. The City Planning Commission, in a letter dated November 13th, requested that the committee review a proposed zoning reclassification of the properties at 1815 and 1825 East Mansfield Street from General Business GB to Limited Industrial Commercial, LIC. Zoning Administrator Kevin <coughs> Hill and Steve Eversall, co-owner of Stowaway Inn, <coughs> a private storage company detailed the proposal to expand the existing business there. The properties in question abut the LIC district and public warehousing is permitted use in the LIC. Myers made a motion to request draft legislation granting the rezoning request and to reschedule a public hearing on the request 
for Monday, January 13th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Troop has second the motion, which passed by voice vote. McKeever recess the planning committee at 6.41 p.m. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments regarding the planning committee this evening? Moving on, finance committee, Ms. Sack. Finance committee, Ms. Thursday, November 21st, um, 6.41 p.m., 7.03 p.m. Members present, Dan Wireball, Kevin Myers, Andrew Schock, and myself. Number one, codified ordinance 129.011, service safety director residency. Mayor Jeffrey Sinner explained that the service safety director has taken on more responsibilities as various new positions have been eliminated or combined over the years. He added that given he added that given that it would be advantageous to widen the, widen the geographic area from which future directors could be chosen. Presently, he or she must live within a three mile radius of the city limits within six months after appointment. Research suggested widening the residency requirement to at least 20 miles of the city limits to match the requirements for the city police and fire chiefs. Legislation to do the same was requested by the committee on July 18th, but pulled for revision from the agenda of the regular council meeting of August 8th. It was suggested that the official who sets the city's water rate should live in the city. Myers made a motion to request legislation amending codified ordinance 129.011 to state that the service safety director established his or her residency within a 20 mile radius of the city's limits within six months after appointment. Shock made the motion, which passed by voice vote. Wireball voted no. Number two, staff adjourned the finance committee meeting at 7.03 p.m. Okay, any questions or comments regarding the finance committee minutes? Just a quick comment, I guess. Right. Just yeah. a quick comment. I guess I, as she's reading through this, it just clicked and I, I guess what's the issue with the limit of which we hire a service director anyways, by this language, we could hire a service director from the state of Florida as long as he moves to Ohio and lives in Desires within six months of his hiring date. Right. Is my reading that incorrectly? No. Okay. So I, I'm just saying, I mean, I guess we're worried about the, the where we can hire this person from by this no, language. No, that this, we no, right. That says that they can live within six right. months, they have to be here in the city. Right. Well, no, that's not it. That is. What I read was, Within a 20 mile radius. Within right. Within a 20 mile radius. But well, right now, right now, they're required to live within the three mile radius. Right. Of the and I propose to expand that within six months to live within 20 miles. Right. Because to match the police and fire chief. Right. I was just making the comment yeah. that it's like the reason for trying to do this is, yeah. is, you know, to be more advantageous to widen the geographic area from which future directors can be chosen. I mean, really, the residency requirement has no restriction on where they can be chosen from as long as they move here within six months. Well, yeah, the point I made though at the last meeting, though, is though if, if somebody lives in Marion and, and they have a, a, maybe a spouse that drives to Columbus, you know, right. You know, that was, they didn't want to move any, but, you know, they're, they're right there. They, that's why, you know, okay. they're already in the district, you know. That's, guess, that's for those folks. Right. I guess I was just misunderstanding, I guess, from Jump, that we were worried about where we would be able to hire these people from, not necessarily no, where they no, live afterwards. Would, you know, we, I would assume we would do a statewide, you know, a nationwide search, but you never know. Okay. Uh, but um, the point is, if there's people within that radius right now with an existing home, you know, that would... You know, they might be more apt to apply. Right, right. So. Okay. I got one. Yes, sir. Well, I think you're, at first I want to address it. I think you're misunderstanding. It's not only to choose, but for them to live there. Right. I get that part now. Okay. What I'm saying is that at the beginning, I thought the whole idea behind this oh. was we just wanted to expand our area from which we could grab a person from, not oh. necessarily where they live oh, okay. to. Okay. All right. Right, so. so then my second point is uh, I just want to uh, I thank Jenny for coming and she touched on several of the points, but I think uh, I got a few that didn't get touched on uh, either in the meeting or, or what, what Jenny said. Uh, first of all, how about believing the SARS? How about having a stake in your community? This whole issue offends me. The service safety director knew when he took this job what the residency requirements were, just like a previous mayor knew he had to, and he had to step down. <clears throat> Should we change the law for him? Uh, this wasn't an issue until he moved to Sulphur Springs. Uh, council approved a raise of $71,000 annually for the service safety director the first of the year. Uh, then he moves out of town. Does that mean, mean we're paying him too much? Uh, if you work here and pay through taxpayers' money from USARS, I think you should live here. Uh, the partnership has been screaming about the brain drain in our community 
uh, and they've created a program to bring people to our area, but this just seems to be the opposite of what they're trying to achieve. Uh, and the mayor has said this is needed because we may not be able to find a suitable candidate for this position within our city, and uh, that may offend some people. It may be true, which I doubt, but there are absolutely no facts to that statement. And until there is, I see no reason in changing the requirements. Uh, until we come to the point that we can't find someone in this town, then change it. Why mess with the town? Okay, That's I it. would object to 1.2. Okay, yeah. The previous mayor moved out of town. Yeah. The mayor is an elected official and he falls under a whole different he line. Does. And yes. so that has nothing to do with okay. something we're talking well, about. I'll now. Take that. I'll the take service that safety that. director is not an elected official. He is, or she is, an appointed position. Okay. Anyone else with comments? Mayor. Um, I, if I recall, I don't think we approved the higher wage, did we? Seventy-one thousand. No. I don't. Did I think that was tabled? It was tabled. It was never passed. I don't think we gave the service. I think, think, no, think, think we yeah. Maybe I read the one. Maybe I read the one on uh, where it went through committee. Because yeah, Andy yeah. said, Andy mentioned. That's what I read was Andy said, uh, "Well, I don't think this much is enough, but this much is." Well, Andy, Andy said, we did it for said everybody "I remember Andy said he compromised, and we and we tabled it. And we tabled it. And we, and we, and we never we never voted on. That's the second thing that's wrong. Third okay. thing, Mr. Wagner has not moved to Sulphur Springs." He bought a property. Did he just bought a property there? He owns a property. Okay. He hasn't moved there. He lives over. He lives in ten houses down. He, he's your neighbor. You know. Okay. Third thing, you know, it's a moot point because they're already allowed to live outside the city. Now, if you want to move them back in the city, this is the point that you're making. I would like to see that. <laughs> well, it's it's, it. and then I hate plenty of reasons why that job is going to require. A more technically savvy person the next time. And that because offends me that you don't can get I that finish, person please? In here. Yeah. Okay, finish. gentlemen, please. Right. Slowly, I didn't interrupt you. So okay. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be, you know, nasty about it. I just think, you know, for, you know, this is not just for the service director, this is for the, the mayor. Now, you, if, if, if you become mayor or, or anybody becomes mayor, they don't have to. They can set that and say, you need to live in the city limits before they hire a service director. If you so choose to do that as mayor, that should be your business. But the next mayor should have the ability, just like they have the ability for the fire chief to hire the fire chief and the police chief, they should have the ability to go out 20 miles. I think that's a fair assessment. I think the argument that's made here is, is really moot because Right now, they're already allowed to go with the property tax. They don't pay property tax to live three miles outside the city. That's a, that's a moot point. Um, it, and, you know, it's it's not just for our administration. I know if we lost Mr. Wagner, we would, we would lose a special guy because he's taken a lot of burden uh, on himself. And we've eliminated several supervisory positions. The next person may not have the ability. So, like I said at the last meeting, you know, they may have to hire the supervisor of positions back because it's going to have several hundred thousand dollars. I, I don't think it's a lot to ask here. If we lose Mr. Wagner, I want to make sure that we have the ability to go out a little farther, just like we already do. The precedent has been set here for future mayors. They don't have to abide by it. It's just there. If you don't want to go out in outside the city limits, that would be your decision. That is 100% fine. But for future mayors, this is for anybody who wants to sit in these seats. It just it just makes sense. To you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? No. I'm sorry. We um, normally don't accept comments at this point in time. That's fine. Uh, the uh, we'll be coming around to where we have uh, comments from. And you're more than welcome to comment then it's prior to the legislation okay okay thank you um the sack would you like to finish this up for us please number four public participation there was none number five sack asked for a motion to adjourn to one regular committee motion by phone and second by mckeever to adjourn at 7 3 p.m motion okay thank you um 
The Finance Committee met in special session on Monday, November the 25th, 2019 at 3.34 p.m. The SAC. Uh, members present were Kevin Myers, Andrew Schock, and Dan Weyerbaugh, acting chair. The special finance committee <coughs> meeting was called by Mayor Jeff Reeser to discuss the 2020 budget. The meeting was called to order by Weyerbaugh at 3.34 p.m. Number one, 2020 budget. Service Safety Director Jeff Wagner, Mayor Jeff Reeser, Otter Joyce Schiffer, and Service Foreman Jeff Dunn shared the administration priorities for the 2020 budget with committee members in the following areas. A, traffic lights, installation of new poles, painting of existing poles. B, streets, two full-time employees split with parks, mill and pave, two new salt plow trucks, concrete pile. C, parks, two full-time employees split with streets and mulch. D, sewers and drains, storm water, U.S. EPA projects, including flow monitoring, E, solid waste administration, county landfills, rates, F, utility maintenance, certified electrician, G, police department, two new radios, GIS software, H, fire department, new equipment, I, general administration, website, email hosting, new computer, law director, potential lawsuit, council, new computer, zoning administrator, floodplain planning, and GIS software, new computer, um, lands and buildings, reservoir maintenance, city hall chiller, various improvements, and water filtration, retirement, reservoirs, water tower maintenance, propane backup, office equipment, oh, water distribution, state route 98, water line expansion, P, sewage disposal, new equipment. The next finance committee meeting on the 2020 budget was tentatively scheduled for December 5th. <coughs> Okay, questions or comments regarding those minutes? Have we set a time for that? Mr. Myers, no, we hadn't. Okay. Uh, the uh, fifth is tomorrow. Yes. No, no. Thursday. 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 Oh, and we are Thursday. Um, <laughs> where is the week gone? It, it, yeah. It'll go by fast. It's though. airplane night. <laughs> okay. uh, the, uh, uh, we were talking about uh, that and something you may want to do for consideration is either to have uh, did Mr. Wagner say that is he ready for Thursday evening or not? We'll be ready. We, do we still we'll, have the? I think I think we'll be ready. I gave him a worksheet and he and Kelly went through it today mm -hmm. with notes to me, which I probably would have gotten that corrected, but I was on the phone for three hours with the software support this afternoon. <laughs> and a lot of software support. <laughs> but we should be ready for Thursday. Okay. We should be ready. Okay. So I, I think one of the questions that was coming up about the Thursday meeting was whether to uh, do the separate finance committee meeting at 3.30 in the afternoon or 4, and then the committee at 6. I know we have, yeah, yes. I know we have uh, negotiations oh. on Thursday. Yeah. And I think the CIC meeting at 5 as CIC well. CIC at 5. Okay. And so, so then that's going to not work out. Well, the session should, meeting will be very, very brief. Yeah, half we, an hour. Just, we should be done half with the negotiations by, I would say, 3.30 or so. Yeah. Okay. I have an appointment at 3.30 if that makes okay. any difference. <laughs> but okay. so I, let's I think, think about it. We'll address it at the end of the meeting, okay? I think we can come up with anything else other than that, okay? Uh, moving on with the agenda. Traffic Commission, we have no minutes uh, from the Traffic Commission. Uh, do you have any report, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, no track. Well, I do want to say one thing. Uh, well, first of all, we have a meeting scheduled for Friday morning at 10 o'clock. And uh, I might as well tell you right now that traffic is going to get a little rough here for the next month on our eastern corridor. Uh, speaking of Whetstone Street, uh, we are going to be closing the intersection of Whetstone and Southern for about two weeks very soon, uh, as soon as the, uh, I mean, it's finished up at uh, CSO 6, which I think has been wrapped up here just recently. So that's gonna be closed for two weeks. Okay, So the access, starting when? Um, this week, I think just this week. This week, yeah. I don't have exact date from Dirt Dog, but we'll post it on our website and, uh, and we'll put it on our uh, Facebook page too. It's so gonna be closed for two weeks. We're gonna be doing some uh, storm separation work at that location and then after that becomes open you'll have access to the YMCA and Trillium and West to the east but then we're going to continue to have West close to the north because we're putting in more uh, new lines there so 
here with us. Uh, I know that is a is probably probably the uh, one of the most important access points in town. We're just going to have to go down hop, uh, Hopley to uh, Walnut, and then maybe cut back over to Lane or use some dusky for the next month. And uh, we'll, hopefully, everything will be done by the end of December, first part of January. We'll think about it. So, <laughs> so stay away from Hopley. Or excuse me, stay away from Whetstone. Whetstone at. Whetstone and Southern. Whetstone and Southern is where. It and then it, then it would take about two weeks, barring any unforeseen circumstances. Then that will be open. You'll have access to go east on Southern okay. in two weeks, but you will not have access to go uh, north on uh, Whetstone Street. So it's part of our sewer storm sewer separation okay. project. But Highland is now open. Yes. Right. Well, there's still a little bit yeah more to do in the uh, the wrap up work there too. So, so yeah, we're pretty we're, we've done a lot of work on the open this body. It's bumpy, but it's open. It's bumpy. Yeah. Okay. We will not be able to pay that obviously until. So okay. Okay. So everybody understands that. Uh, anything else? Nothing about traffic. Okay. Well, we do have a referral to the traffic commission, okay. and if you're meeting this Friday, okay. uh, the city parking lot number six space for the AEP charging station mm -hmm. needs to be referred to the traffic commission. Do I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Meyer, second by Mr. Fote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion passed. Okay, so the AEP space so may I and lot number six. Madam President, what do you want traffic commission to do with that referral? This is you area. have the, uh, it, the approval. If you're going to set aside a specific spot, Okay. And reserve it and or change the rules. So we send it back to and us, you send it back to us, and good. then we'll take it from there. Okay. okay. Health it's and moved through back to okay. health and safety, then back to full council, and then so it's got to make its trip around the world. Okay. For a second time. For the second time, yes. Uh, any other questions about traffic? I, I Mr. Waterfall. I do have a couple. Uh, and I, this is, may not be traffic, but it is traffic related. The line at Crossroads park out there. Apparently I've got a couple of people saying that. And I went through there one day, it just turned red and there was no one sitting there. Um, yeah, there was. I told her to call us. Yeah. Um, we talked last week about that and then Perry Street, uh, those those trip lights and I, I when I understood they were they were working on those last week. They were working on Perry Street yesterday. Yesterday? Okay. Yeah. Okay, they're then they'll be going up to crossroads. Okay, as long as, as long as you're aware of it. Uh, the other thing was I and I may be wrong on this. I've been wrong before, uh, many times. <laughs> but but I know they just did uh, well down across from uh, your house uh, on uh, Sandusky there. Yeah. I thought we eliminated a couple of spots, or maybe we put them back in in We're front of uh, in front of uh, Cooper's. I thought. Did no, we didn't make any changes. To no, this, was, this might have been before no. you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was a spot there by the corner. We, I, I, I think we put everything back in that we. Well, I, I just I don't know who that, yeah. looks at that, but maybe someone should look at the map yeah. and make sure they got those spots okay. right. I, I will check. I don't that. want because I thought I went through there and I saw those signs yeah. laying in the grass. Yeah, we no, we have <coughs> we looked at all that. Okay, I think, I think we put everything back in the same way. Uh, that's been been six weeks since we did that. I'll, I'll check into it though now. Because I drove through yeah. there and I saw the yeah. sign laying there. Oh yeah, I did in the in the yard. And I'm yeah. thinking, is that the sign that said no parking from here to the corner? And there was like two more spots. Yeah, so, yeah. so just I just saw it. Well, wanted to bring it to your. We'll, we'll have a yeah. We'll get you an answer. Okay. Thank you. Any other traffic questions? No. I need a motion to accept the committee minutes and related committee reports collectively. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. McKeever, second by Mr. Fote to accept the committee reports collectively. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion passed. Moving on to report of city officers. We do not have a written report from the I mayor, but you have comments. Um, yeah, I will. It's been a rough week for all of us. Um, you know, I, uh, we talked with Chief today, Rob and I, Jeff, and uh, you know they uh, they're very grateful for the outpouring of uh, of support from the community. And, uh, 
funeral was uh, very difficult, and, but uh, it was it was also beautiful at the same time. It was a standing room only, and uh, there was many many beautiful testimonials. And so um, the family has asked for you know privacy, and we like to make sure that they we get that too. So. Thank you. Any uh, specific questions for the mayor this evening? Yeah, Mr. Well, Harbaugh? this is minimal, but uh, someone had asked in about the lights on the square. Are, are there going to be lights on the square to be? Is that left up to the we, well, people we, to take care of that? We just what? trim the trees, and, and uh, we, many of the lights that were in the trees had stuck in the trees, oh. many were ruined. So we're in the process of buying some new lights. You know. Okay. Well, okay. We're finding trying to find some money to buy some new lights. So if anybody out there <laughs> would like to make a donation since you brought it up. I got three hundred three hundred dollars will take three hundred lights, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it's, it's, the issue right now is just trying to find the money for it and uh, it's um, you yeah. know it's I want to find Griswold lights then. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What? You may, but no. <laughs> Do it at your house. I already did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on then. Uh, no report from the service director this evening no. either? No. Okay. Moving on to the law director. Mr. Rappi. Uh, well, I have a very lengthy report. Yeah, I'm sure you don't. No, uh, I don't have a report, but I do have one referral to the Finance Committee. Uh, this was the third year of our FOP contract uh, wage year opener for that third year. We have a, uh, an agreement on that. It just needs to go to the committee to approve it and back to full council for their approval. So, okay. just FOP contract. Okay, I need the FOP contract put into Finance Committee. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Fode, second by Mr. Schock. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passed. Thank you. That's it. Any questions for the law director? None. Uh, auditor, Mrs. Schiffer. Well, I have no reports. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have your uh, statement of cash position dated November the 30th, 2019. Is that impacted? No. No. It's not. But it's not in the I think we have. I think we have things. Corrected now. There was a little. I I got too many um, instructions from too many people who didn't know how the system was set up. Okay. So that's why we spent three hours this afternoon. Okay. So but that that maybe be we'll available Thursday. Yes. It'll yes. Be available Thursday. We maybe. should be able to maybe email it tomorrow or. Okay. Whatever. Well, so does it include it? We should have Thursday. Thursday. Yes. We'll include it in the packet Thursday. Yes. Okay. Uh, the treasurer's report, isn't there something similar, likewise? Uh, likewise, okay. and I think there may be an issue there for a while. Okay. <laughs> okay. Don't Does anyone know. have any questions for the auditor tonight? <laughs> we love new software. <laughs> Thanks, Conversions Windows. are always interesting. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thanks, Windows, for forcing everybody to get new systems. Yeah. Life is good. Okay, we have nothing from the police chief or the fire chief. I need a motion to accept the city officer's reports. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Sack, second by Mr. Myers. No, Mr. Weyerbaugh. Mr. Weyerbaugh. Mr. Weyerbaugh. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion passed. <coughs> Thank you. This is where we have visitors input regarding uh, reports of the standing of special committees and of city officers. If you'd like to address council, please step to the uh, uh, podium, we need your name and address, please. My name is Lisa Alsett. Uh, my address is 1323 North Sandusky Avenue. Um, I guess what I want to say is that the guys that are sitting up here, eventually, obviously, I'm going to be sitting up here soon. If they've been contacted by people that live in the community, I know I contacted my representative. I know my daughter contacted hers. That they should vote not just what they want, but maybe for what the people that they're representing want. I'm against having an extended radius for the city service director because I feel he should have a vested interest in our community. I've always felt like you take better care of your home if you own it rather than if you rent it. 
and his tax dollars should be given to our community and his care should be given to our community as if it were his own community. So. Okay, just a comment, his tax dollars, he works here and he pays taxes well, here. His property taxes, sorry I should have been there. Okay, Mr. Name and address please. Kurt Fankhauser, 1675 South Sandusky. I I don't think anybody's questioning the current safety service director's ability to do his job. I think he's doing a fine job. And I think he's also a, a testament to show that even though he came from a different prior job, having been in the retail, that somebody can learn this job in our community. And with 12,000 people living in this community, I, I think that to extend the radius is sending the wrong message. And it's, it's almost sending a slap in the face to those 12,000 people saying that there's, there's nobody smart enough among you to do that job. So I would ask that everybody on council not approve the 20 miles here on this vote to be held tonight slash and or hold the vote to three readings which you know we've got new people coming in on council and we may if this passes we may have new council might decide to put this right back in the committee and change it back to the three miles so that's that's all i got to say anyone else to address council this evening Jim Mead, 873 West Perry Street. And everybody said everything that should be said about this. I mean, the three miles is more than enough that's already set in place. We don't need to go 20 miles out. So there's nothing else I can say that hasn't been said already. So I hope you don't put it down. Thank you. Anyone else? Moving on, do we need a recess this evening? No? Okay. For consideration of proposed legislation for the first time. We've got three pieces of legislation, uh, two ordinances, and one resolution. Ordinance number 60, 2019, amending and supplementing section 303.08, entitled Impounding of Vehicles, Redemption of Chapter 303, entitled Enforcement, Impounding, and Penalty of Part 3, entitled Traffic Codes of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Usaris, Ohio. That is referred back to the Health and Safety Committee. Ordinance number 61, 2019, amending and supplementing section 129.011 entitled Residency of Chapter 129 entitled Department of Public Service Safety of Part 1 entitled Administrative Code of the Codified Ordinances of the City of East Iris, Ohio. That is referred back to the Council as a whole. Resolution number 241, 2019, authorizing and directing the Mayor on behalf of the City of East Iris, Ohio to enter into an agreement with AEP Ohio to accept a grant of $94,000 for the construction of an electric vehicle charging station and authorizing the auditor to draw all necessary warrants for payment of $94,000 to the Crawford Partnership for reimbursement of construction costs related to the construction of the electric vehicle charging station and declaring an emergency. That is referred to the Health and Safety Committee. Okay. I need a motion to accept this as the first reading. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion passed. Uh, ordinance number 60-2019 is referred back to Health and Safety Committee. Ordinance number 61-2019 is referred back to Council as a whole. And resolution 241-2019 is referred back to Health and Safety Committee. This is where we allow any par public participation. Any member of the general public may present their input or comments on legislation it has been read for the first time. No one? Committee reports on pending legislation. Ordinance number 60-2019 and pound, I'm sorry, Health and Safety Committee. Health and Safety is favorable to Ordinance 60-2019 and pound ordinance. And the other one? Health and yeah. Safety is favorable to Resolution 241-2019, the AED charging station. 
to move things along, we have uh, uh, council as a whole for the ordinance of the service safety director's residency with finance. Like the answer to that one, please. Just to move to the next step. Audience is favorable to Ordinance 61-2019, the Service Safety Director Residency. Okay, thank you very much. I need a motion to accept these reports. So motion by Mr. McKeever. Second. Second by Mr. Weyerbaugh. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passed. For further consideration of pending legislation, for the second and third readings, proposed ordinance number 60-2019, do I hear a motion to suspend the rules, or which is the impound ordinance? Do I hear a motion to suspend the rules and waive the reading of the caption and text? So move. Second. Waterball. Yes. Myers. Yes. Truca. Sapp. Yes. Pope. Yes. Shock. Yes. McKeeper. Yes. Ordinance number 16-2019. Do I hear a motion to adopt? Proposed ordinance number 60-2019. So moved. Second. McKeever. Yes. Pope. Yes. Shaw. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Wireball. Yes. Truca. Sat. Yes. Ordinance number 60-2019, the impound ordinance is duly adopted. For the second and third readings of proposed ordinance number 61-2019, which is the service safety director residency, do I hear a motion to suspend the rules Waive the reading of the caption and text. No motion? Fails for lack of motion. Moving on for the second and third reading of proposed ordinance number two, or excuse me, resolution 241 2019. Do I hear a motion to suspend the rules, waive the reading of the caption and text, and declare it an emergency? So moved. Second. Uh, Myers. Yes. McKeever. Yes. Wireball. Yes. Truca. Sack. Yes. Pope. Yes. Shock. Yes. Resolution number 241-2019. Do I hear a motion to adopt proposed ordinance number 241-2019? So moved. Second. McKeever. Yes. Pope. Yes. Shock. Yes. Myers. Yes. Wireball. Yes. Truca. Sack. Yes. <coughs> Resolution number 241-2019 is duly adopted. Moving on, uh, unfinished business. Mr. Ratliff. Oh. Madam President, I would like to request an executive session of City Council to discuss pending or imminent court action. Court action is pending if the lawsuit is dismissed. Court action is imminent if there's another court happening or is it pending. Okay, do I hear a motion, Mr. Myers? Madam President, I move at this time that the City Council adjourns into executive session with all available elected officers of the Beside City Administration and the Service Safety Director if available to discuss pending or imminent court action pursuant to Ohio Vice Code Section 121.22, paragraph G3. Court action is pending if a lawsuit has been commenced. Court action is imminent if it is on the point of happening or is impending. I have a motion that the City Council adjourns into executive session with all available elected officers of the Bissar City Administration and the Service Safety Director available to discuss pending Im or imminent court action. Court action is pending if a lawsuit has been commenced. Court action is imminent if it is a, on the point of happening or is impending. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. McKeever. Roll call vote, please. Myers. Yes. McKeever. Yes. Weyerhaul. Yes. Truca. Sack. Yes. Vote. Sure. Shock. Yes. Motion carried. Motion carried. No formal action or vote may be taken in executive session, only to discuss the subject for which executive session was called. We will reserve, reserve recess into executive session at 7.49 p.m. So uh, that... Uh, Legislation needs to come to finance committee. So I need a motion to put the council clerk's appointment in finance. Second. Motion by Mr. Myers, second by Mr. Pote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passed. Thank you. Friday, December the 6th, there's a traffic commission meeting at 10 a.m. in city council chambers. 
Friday and Saturday this week, December the 6th and 7th, is a Winter Wonderfest in downtown. The Santa Parade is on Friday, and Candlelight Christmas is on Saturday. It's going to be, we've got an ice skating rink on the square again this year, so uh, come on out and enjoy. What time? Uh, the Santa Parade is at... Santa Parade starts at 5.30 from City Hall to Mary Street, and then all the festivities at Santa House and ice skating rink will be enjoyed right after said parade. Okay. And Candlelight Christmas, I think, is at 5, isn't it? Yeah, it starts at 5 on Saturday, okay. and I believe it goes till 9 p.m. Okay. 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Yeah, 5 to 8 on Saturday. Uh, five, Friday, December the 6th, is the Bussaras Fire Local 1120's Toy Drive at the fire station from 9 a.m. to noon. You can drop off any presents there you'd like to uh, donate to them. Monday, December the 16th, there's a public hearing on the Tiffin Hill Street rezone request at 6 p.m. in Council Chambers. Tuesday, December the 17th, is a BZA meeting at 4 p.m. in Council Chambers. Tuesday, December the 24th, is Christmas Eve. City offices close at noon. Wednesday, December the 25th, Christmas Day. City offices are closed all day. Monday, December the 30th, the swearing-in ceremony for city elected officials is at 6 p.m. here in Council Chambers. Tuesday, December the 31st is New Year's Eve. City offices close at noon. Wednesday, January the 1st is 2020 is New Year's Day. The city offices will be closed then. We need any other uh, newer miscellaneous items to bring up this evening. Okay, we need to excuse Mr. Truk of this evening. So, second. Motion by Mr. McKeever, second by Mr. Foe to excuse Mr. Truca. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passed. Joint regular committee meetings. Okay, this is where we kind of come back around to this finance meeting for the uh, the budget. Uh, do you want to do it just as part of the regular evening thing? I don't think we have too many items in. Uh, uh, some of these are not for Thursday. Um, yeah. It's a fairly light night. It's going to be a very light night, so if you just want to do it at. Uh, Six o'clock at the regular council meeting or council committees. Then, is that workable? Yay! Yes. Yay! Yeah, I, don't, I don't hear heads. <laughs> I don't hear heads. Yeah, they're not rattling loud enough. Yeah. yeah okay, so that'll be it's at part of the regular committee meetings. All referrals from this council meeting and any open project list items may be discussed during the committee meetings. Referrals for Thursday night are. We have uh, five new referrals. We have the library appointments to economic development from council. We have the council clerk appointment from finance to council. That will not be on the agenda for Thursday. We have the uh, new liquor license for uh, uh, the barbecue uh, from health and safety to council. We have the FOP MOU uh, from finance, from the law director to finance. And we have the um, charging station parking space that's been referred to the traffic commission for Friday from council. Already on the budget, on the agenda, uh, already in committee and on the agenda for Thursday, the uh, Memorial Tree Program in public lands and buildings and the 2020 budget in finance. Uh, also be aware that the uh, Kevin Detray and I believe the uh, contractor they use, uh, whose name is I'm blanking on right now. It's uh, Greg, who, are, who, are, who is the? Greg, the, Greg, the engineer. The one for uh, the airport stuff. The engineer. Yes, What's, who is that? Greg. Greg? Yeah. Greg, Greg. It's Greg, <laughs> uh, well, here. Greg, 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 They'll be here to uh, talk about what they want to do in 2020 with the FDA grant, and uh, that's all I have. If you have anything else you want to add, let me know by 11 a.m. tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Uh, 11 a.m. tomorrow. I need a motion to adjourn. So, second. Motion by Mr. McKeever, second by Mr. Float. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those say no. Motion passed. Adjourn at 8.01 p.m. Thank you.